three plus C. Well, we can simplify it, right? Because you kind of just leave the six alone, just like we do derivatives. You leave the six alone, you do the power rule, and then we could simplify this to be two X to the third plus C. If I just said evaluate the integral, that would be your answer. Like you could say this is g prime of x. We could say that this is g of x. But the extra part is the directions say solve the equation, which means they want you to find out what c is, which is why they give you this extra information. If they give you a point on the original function, can you plug that in for x and y and solve that for c? Um, which one of those is x? Caitlin Boyce never can remember. Like, she never knew which one was X. So I like to make sure that people know which is X, which is Y. So I can plug in negative 1 for G of X. I can plug in 0 for X, which just means that C is negative 1, which means the solution to that differential equation is the function G of X equals 2X cubed. So you get actually what C is instead of using this arbitrary C value. Yes? So um, how could I make it more difficult? What if I gave you the second derivative? Could you work backwards to get the original? No, because I comparing it. So notice on this one, they give you the second derivative is x squared, and they give you two different points. So you're going to actually have to find c two different times um, in order to get back to that original function. And sometimes it's nice to maybe kind of label what you're doing. If this is the second derivative, to find the first derivative, I could do the integral of x squared dx. You actually have to do it twice to get the x over the left. How would you do with your integral times x squared? Mine are terrible. this be x cubed over 3 plus c? But that's only the first derivative since they gave us the second derivative. And you have to find c before you can take the next derivative. Um, so that's why they give you this. So now can we plug this in, find what c is, and do it again? So how about I give you a minute and see if you can get to the answer before I get to the answer. So plug in your x and your y in for the first derivative, find c, and then do the integral again to find the original. It's really nice when they give you zero as the x value because it does pretty much is what it is.
right? So you get x prime of x equals x cubed over 3 plus 6. So we're just going to do it again, right? So now um, we could be, I could really save some paper here and just put this integral sign in there. dx. Oh man, now it's getting tricky. What's the what's the integral of x to the third over three going to become? X to the fourth over four times three is twelve. Look at us. <laughs> plus six x plus c. Really important that you remember the c part. If you forget the c part, then you can't plug in the value, and then you miss lots of points. On the AP test, they have a, almost every year on the free response, there's a question that you have to solve a differential equation. And if you don't um, remember the C, you can only get two out of five points on that problem. Um, so that's how important the plus C is. And we're just going to do it again. And the nice thing about, is when they give you zero, I kind of don't even really have to do this work here. Because when I plug zero in here, that's going to be zero, that's going to be zero. So I'm just going to get that C is three. I get x to the fourth over 12 plus 6x plus 3 as my final answer. What else can we do with this right now? Uh, we can also apply this to velocity acceleration position function. Same idea, but it's not going to just be written down like this. Like maybe they'll give you the velocity and ask you to find the position. Um, I'll give you acceleration and ask you to find position, but it's kind of telling you to work backwards. So my last example, my last one, then it's kind of a word game, so you might have to shorten it up or just write something. Uh -huh. Number 83 from your packet if you don't really want to write the whole thing out. But, um, oh, my whole thing about getting two out is I'm at 34 grade points. <laughs> and then I wrote it on Facebook, and then Scrub this morning said, what's that sound? I don't know what to eat. <laughs> You just kind of get it into it. Like last night, last night Parker and Nolan, like they're just getting back together because I don't know why. I try to stay concentrated with them together. They're always getting together back together. Well, Nolan likes to just lay back in the tub and just kick his feet like maniacs. Oh, so he will oh. get so cute and slap. So he's kicking and slapping blood everywhere. Well, then Parker starts to lay down, which doesn't really work so well because it's kind of a big kid. So he gets water like splashing around everywhere. So water splashes all over Nolan. And so he like swallows the water, he starts coughing, and so then he pukes in the bath water. So he like starts coughing and then he pukes. Parker freaks out. Like Parker like jumps up, hits his back on the faucet of the tub, starts screaming, crying. No one's puking, and I'm yelling downstairs for my husband. I'm like, wake up, I'm over here. And I was like, help Parker. And so then Parker wasn't even like touch the water. He's like standing on the side of the tub, crying because he hit his back. And I pulled the baby, covered in puke, not me, it wasn't covered in puke. And I was like, Parker, it's just puke. Just let the water out and I'll turn the towel on. It's just puke. And it was, he wouldn't even touch the water. It's just puke. And then my husband was trying to get the like water, like wash it down. And he's like, wait a minute, I gotta get that green bean to go down. <laughs> I shouldn't give you homework to go back and watch all the videos from last semester. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I have videos. Um, I'll give you my YouTube name, my YouTube oh, name, and then you can go watch it. Yeah, YouTube channel. Subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I should just give him Patrick, Patrick JMT's thing because he's way better. So if your position function is s of t, the velocity function 
will be the derivative of that. So if you know a function's position, when you take its derivative, you get its velocity. And when you take the derivative again, acceleration is what you get. So the acceleration would be the second derivative of the position function, which would be the first derivative of velocity, which is acceleration. So in calculus, oftentimes they give us problems about velocity and acceleration, and we're doing the same thing with the whole derivative and integral. So I'll show you how to do this, and then we'll see the difference for some students. So the difference for us now, that from what we did last semester, is now they can give us the velocity, and they can ask us to uh, find the acceleration, which is not new, but they can also ask us to go backwards and find the position, because then now we can integrate it whatever. So, um, find the acceleration. So if this is the velocity function, and I'm going to go ahead and write that as t to the negative one-half power, what do I do to velocity to get acceleration? You just take its derivative. So to get the acceleration, it is equal to the derivative of the velocity function. So here's the fun part of calculus. you got to get your brain knowing when do I take the derivative, when do I take the integral, and remembering the, the rules there. So we've been doing the power rule for integration, but now we have to remember to do the derivative, this would really be negative one-half t to the negative three-halves. As in derivative, we pull it out front and we subtract one. Um, we can simplify that, but I don't even really care. Let's just do this. That would be the acceleration. We also want the position function. If we know velocity, how are we going to get position? Yeah, we got to work backwards. So we have to take the integral. I could say that the integral of the velocity function is going to equal the position function. So I'm going to take the integral of t to the negative one half dt. And so now integrating, I'm going to add one and divide by that. So what do I get when I add one to negative one half? And when you divide by one half, that's the same as multiplying by two. So are you okay if I just put a two out front instead of dividing by one half? <laughs> Plus c t is. <laughs> my position function. And notice they gave us a value because otherwise we don't know what c is. They tell us that at time equals one, the position is x equals four. People get really thrown off by that, which really means probably instead of using S here, I should be using like X or T, which I find really weird, but because they use X up there. I like S. But. So at time T equals 1, that would be 2 times 1 plus C. <coughs> the position is 4, so we can use that to find C. C equals 2. So I can say that the position function is um, 2t to the 1 half. What's this? Yeah. Uh, because this right here. They tell me that that time equals one, so I plug in one for time. Uh, but oh, I just kind of didn't do that because one to the one half power is still one, right? Because that's just the square root of one. It's just oh yeah. Uh, x to the one half is the same as the square root of x. So when you have 1 to the 1 half power, 
It's still just one. Okay? So I just kind of left that out because I just did it in my head, I guess. So today's homework is a lot shorter than yesterday's homework, but there's more problems like this where you have to do, like, talk about acceleration, velocity, position. Think about that. I think I have a homework sheet for you, too. This is five to one day. That's five to one day, too. No, tactical.